All right, guys, so I want to kind of hash out one little topic in regards to diaphragmatic breathing. I was in between sets here in the middle of my workout, and I was kind of thinking back to an article I had written on the topic, as well as some questions I had gotten from a few folks. And uh, I want to touch on a small little nuance in regards to the actual diaphragmatic breath. So when people are referring to diaphragmatic breathing, what they are talking about is the influence of the diaphragm and the pelvic floor, and basically the position of your rib cage, if you're overextended, the rib cage tilts out and down, the pelvic floor tilts up and out, and you get this kind of scissored crisscross phenomenon, unless you're very inefficient at certain, um, let's call them bioenergetic processes. And because of that, you limit yourself with then the production of energy for certain energy systems or energy pathways. Anyways, if you want to learn more about that, if it's in the article, I'll link it in the description box below. But what I want to touch on is the idea that um, diaphragmatic breathing sometimes gets referred to as belly breathing, which can be good and bad at the same time. Teaching people to learn to breathe into their abdomen or to breathe into their belly is a very uh, efficient skill for those that are upper chest breathers. So they typically pull air into their lungs using scalene, pec minor, sternocleidomastoid, all these neck muscles and upper chest muscles to essentially, rather than use the partial pressure of air and the difference in the, that pressure gradient between outside air and your lungs, which is normally how it functions, you're essentially now using muscles to expand the rib cage and forcefully draw in that air instead of allowing that pressure gradient to work. So with those folks, it can be very beneficial to teach them, hey, let me put you in a supine position on the floor, 90-90 position up against the wall. Let me get your back flat against the floor and then put one hand on your stomach and one hand on your chest and learn to move your stomach before your chest moves. Really a uh, fairly simple concept. Lots of people won't get it, which may seem strange to you. You may be able to go sit in your chair. Okay, I can give myself that kind of pregnant belly phenomenon, push out my stomach really far, not a big deal. Well opposite end of the spectrum is instead of only breathing in with the diaphragm, you got to remember that the breath starts with the diaphragm descending and the pelvic floor moving up and then you should get full apical expansion in which the rib cage expands both anteriorly and posteriorly and laterally. So what a lot of people have a habit of doing, myself included, is only breathing diaphragmatically. Trying to make yourself as fat as possible down here but then nothing changes up here. So, I was having a conversation uh, this weekend actually on Facebook with a uh, lady named Kathy Dooley, Dr. Kathy Dooley. Uh, she's very smart. I'll link her in the uh, comment section below. And uh, you can check out her YouTube channel. She's got some excellent content. Um, but she put out a breathing video discussing diaphragmatic breathing. And uh, so I was kind of thinking about this topic and I, uh, I asked her, I said, well, is it possible for someone to be uh, too focused on diaphragmatic breathing in that they don't get proper apical expansion. And she said, well, yeah, sure, that's just the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, so that kind of got me thinking, processing a few different things. So lately, um, what I've been trying to focus on is let the breath start in the stomach, but then as it rises up, one of the things that you can watch for is don't let the shoulders rise specifically, but allow the rib cage to move out, to expand. So an example, would be here, start with the bottom hand, finish with the top hand. So if you notice, this hand moved out, but not up. So one more time. Exhale, breathe out. So it's gonna take a little bit of practice, and um, what you may find is it may be tough to then inflate the posterior mediastinum, posterior mediastinum in between the shoulder blades. And again, I have other drills for that on my YouTube. If you look at my warm-up sequences or um, the quadruped breathing drills, all those are really good for working on that. Um, so breathing is a sequence. You gotta start in the abdomen and then move your way up into the rib cage. Don't follow the one end of the spectrum or the other. Don't be a chest breather, but don't just be a belly breather. You must have both in order to optimally expand the rib cage that leads to enhanced core stability, spinal stability, all the way down that conundrum. So, it's just something to be thinking about, whether it be in your warm-up or when you're squatting, deadlifting, 
all those different movements. Uh, keep it in the back of your mind and um, try it out. Let me know what you think.